Although mortal, Detritus possessed magic. He took ordinary stones and transformed them into masterpieces. His art was his power, and it cast a spell upon young Epistelia. Her enchanted eyes were hypnotized by his ability to chisel away at a simple rock and uncover such beautiful scenery hidden within it. It was like watching white doves emerge from black ice, like witnessing snow-covered mountains rise from a hot, barren desert. Detritus unearthed majesty in everything he carved. Thus, it was no surprise when he took one look at Epistelia and despite her jagged exterior, saw the work of art beneath. While Epistelia's desire was to observe Detritus' work, his desire was to observe her. Soon, it was the hypnotic sculptor who became spellbound, entranced by Epistelia's underlying exquisiteness. She did fancy him and flirt with him, but his feelings were much more intense. He loved her, he wanted her, and he let this desire consume him and weaken him to the point where Zeus was easily able to overtake his body. Zeus, set on exacting revenge, finally found his opportunity. Detritus and Zeus's wife Hera had once before explored the stature of each other's bodies, and now it was Zeus's turn to tarnish Detritus's love. Like any other day, Epistelia came to watch the sculptor, but soon figured out it was her he wanted to sculpt. Wearing Detritus's appearance, Zeus took hold of Epistelia and carved into her with his body until his vengeance was fulfilled. Detritus, no longer possessed, stared at Epicelia, who now appeared different in the slightest of ways. It was unnoticeable to an untrained eye, but he could see the changes inside of her the same way that he could see a sculpture within a slab of slate. They carried on, ignoring what had happened, and each day, as the two grew closer, Epistelia grew sicker. She was withering away like a wilting flower whose leaves began to brown and crumble. Detritus shouted at the sky, Please, gods, please, fates, hear me. I will do anything to save my dear Epistelia. The fates heard him. The green flower of renewal must be retrieved. Climb the Salvati waterfall of Poseidon. You both must go. Your wishes will be received. If you fail. Your troubles will widen. Epistelia summoned whatever strength she had left, and they both set out to climb Poseidon's sacred waterfall. Poseidon, angered by their trespassing, stirred the water. The foamy, white, ruffling water transformed into a herd of wild horses, charging at Poseidon's targets. The rising, angry water did its best to drown the two, but Poseidon's efforts were in Zeus joined in, releasing downpours from the sky, setting the clouds on fire with lightning and shaking the earth with thunder. Still, Apostelia and Detritus remained untouched and completely dry. The gods, baffled by this, did not let up and exhausted their powers trying to take them down. Apostelia's strength left her as they continued to climb, and her body was withering away even faster. She looked at Detritus with defeat on her face. It was you, Detritus, who treasured me, yet it was your body that tainted me. Detritus fell at her feet and the rains now poured down on the both of them, completely drowning them as they finally acknowledged their past. Detritus, hardened by the terrible deed his body had done, turned into the rocks that bedded the waterfall. As Epistelia's long-awaited tears flowed down with the rain, washing over her body, she transformed into the flowing water. She, who had been shaped and molded by her experience, now eternally flowed over the Tritus, and it was the sculptor who would now forever be sculpted.